Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm sitting in my craft room and it is a mess. I haven't even put up the things that I used to make these cute Jeep earrings yesterday. So if you like those and haven't seen that video, check it out. I'm excited to bring you a new project today, so let's get started. I'm going to click on New Project and Upload. I'm going to be making some leaf earrings today. I'll click Upload Image. I've already dragged the image to my desktop and it's right there. So I click on, click on it and then say Open. And you can see it already has a transparent background. This is going to be super easy. Now I want it to be a cut file. So I'll click on Simple and Continue. Now I can use the little eraser here to get rid of this stem. So let's just do that real quick. I think I'll leave it longer like that. Now the one that really bothered me was this one. I didn't like how much it, I don't know, competed with the stem. Let me just kind of shave a little bit of this off. Now anytime you don't like something you did, click this undo and there it is back. I don't have a real steady hand. I'd like this to... Ah! Hey, that's not bad. I wanted it to be smooth and it kind of got away from me, but that looks really good. Let's go with continue and then click over on the cut side and earring leaf and I'll say final so I know which one to pull in if I do it in the future. Okay, we'll go ahead and click on it and say insert image and voila, we finally are to where, whoops, Marilyn's happy. Okay, there we go. Now let's see what these look like at two and a quarter inches tall. So I go up to height and just change that seven point whatever it was to 2.25. And there's my earring. It seems a little bit wide to me, but I don't want to mess up this one yet. So I'm going to click on Duplicate. Now let's see what would happen. I'll unlock it, and I'm going to say that I want this to be one and a half inches wide. Let's see what the shape looks like then. Hmm, that's kind of nice. There's things I like about both. I like the rounded shape of this. It's probably more realistic. But I feel like this is a better width for an earring. I'm not going to get rid of this one. I'm just going to change it a different color so that it won't try to cut at the same time this earring cuts. I'm going to go 1.75. Okay. It's my final choice. Then I'll click on contour. I don't want these two. Let's see where they were they. Here's a hole and here's a hole. I don't want those to cut out. So I'm going to say to hide those two things. You can either click over here or I could have clicked here and that would hide them. And then I'll back out of that and look, they went away. Now I want to duplicate it for my other ear, and then I want it to be the mirror image of the other side, so I'll go up here and I'll say flip, flip horizontal. So I would probably wear them like that, but you can decide that when you put them on. On make it, and I'm going to move these down so that I know exactly where to place my leather. And so I can have a little tape around it. So I'll put them two inches down, two inches over, continue, then browse all materials, leather. Now this is 
two to three ounce tooling leather. I'm going to try this two to three ounces and see how that cut works. Click done. Wants me to use my knife blade. So now I'll turn the camera around, get the knife blade loaded, and we'll do our cut. Here's a scrap piece of the leather that I'm going to use, and it's a thin tooling leather, so the back is not fuzzy. Usually I like to put something under it to protect my mat when I'm using leather. In this case, I'm going to put it straight on. I also cut some earrings out of this using my Glow Forge. If any of you are interested in Glow Forges, I'll be making some videos with that. It won't take over my channel, but I will be doing some videos on it. And then, of course, I'm going to put down some tape. That's just what I do. Now, it wants me to use my knife blade. This is a knife blade. It has this more of a rotary head on it like the rotary cutter does. This is the rotary cutter. It's good for fabrics. And then this is the knife blade. And it has a blade that sticks out quite to ways. So let's go ahead and put that in. Now, if you're interested in this project and this leather, I purchased this from Springfield Leather Company. I got two square feet of it, and it is called, well, it says side dash, meaning it comes from the side of the animal. It's Herman Oak Craftsman 2 to 3 ounce. It's abbreviated just Herm, but if you look on their website, it is Herman Oak Craftsman 2 to 3 ounce. And at least when I bought it, it retailed for $8.59 per square foot. All right, give this one more nice spring. And then let's see what we get. Okay, seriously guys, I feel like I could have taken a nap during that. It did four passes, and it was very, very slow and intricate on each pass. And it seems like it took about 10 minutes. I will let you know in the video, even though I will speed it up, I will put in a title how long that took. It very much felt like overkill, but I don't know. And look how close I got to this edge. And did it run over the tape? I don't think it did. I think it just barely missed the tape. Well, looks like they didn't cut through quite everywhere. So I'm going to grab my actual knife blade and try to cut through where it did not. Did anyone have the old, old Sizzik, the hand, the hand press one? This is from that. Okay, so I think I need to turn it this way. And then just figure out where it didn't cut quite all the way through. And just help it the rest of the way through. Okay, so let's get to the part of the video that I was really excited to try out. And that is to add some color to those. I'm going to start with some old scrapbooking ink. These are really, really old. And so hopefully that will work. And then from my old scrapbooking days, I didn't use much of this. But these are some waxy metallics. And I might utilize those on the edges of the leaves. And then lastly, I think I will with a tiny paintbrush. I'm going to use this brush, I think, for that. Kind of dry brush that on. And then for the veins that go through these, I'm going to use either this tiny paintbrush or this little silicone paintbrush with some either dark, dark green or some brown paint. Most likely this burnt umber, but we'll see. 
I'm not sure until I get the dye on what it's going to look like. So I'm going to experiment before I do anything with those on this little scrap piece. This is just a paper towel. And I want to see the differences in colors of these two greens. This one is so old that the, the foam just sinks in. Okay, I think that one's too old. That's probably not going to work. That was a pigment ink pad. This one is a dye based. I think this will be better. I believe that when I did earrings before I found that the dye based ones worked better, but I'd have to go back and watch my own video to see. Now I have green under my fingernail. Okay, yeah, that's much better. So I'm just going to rub this little dye-based ink all over these leaves. Trying to really rub it down into the slight textures in the leather. And then eventually I'd like to try to rub it onto the sides of the leather, but I'm probably not going to take time in this video to do that. Okay, that looks good. Now, let me see what happens and I try to just add a little of this. Ooh, it's probably hard to see on camera, but it adds just a nice sheen to it. I'm going to try to stay just around the edges because this is kind of a waxy base product and I'm afraid if I get it on the insides of the leaves that when I try to paint my stem that goes through it or the veins that go through it that the paint won't stick. So. Oh, that's pretty. I like that. Okay, before I do the other one, I'm going to see about the paint. So I'm just going to do a line that kind of goes down the middle. This is really just meant to be very subtle. and in the direction of each leaf or I'm sorry each I don't know little section of the leaf I like the one without the brown and whoops get back over there so i am going to try to blend in that brown hmm okay i really love this one i really don't love this one at all And that looks really tacky. And that one looks really cute. So I, for my earrings, will recut one earring. And then I'll go ahead and add this dye-based stamping ink. 
and my waxy product on it, and then I'll add the hardware. So I'm going to use this die punch on 564 inch and place it where I think the hole should go. Now on these earrings, it is going to be virtually impossible to get the fish hook in this little thing without adding jump rings. And I don't really like that nub, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to cut it off. Okay, problem fixed. I'm going to use silver fish hooks. I just wanted just a nice, subtle, plain fish hook. So you put your punch up against the leather where you think you want it. Don't press much until you are ready to commit. And then on the silver fish hooks, the opening is on this front side. So I grab it with my needle nose pliers and then hold on to your earring and just twist. Then just the reverse process gets it back in place. So there's our earrings. I think they turned out really cute. Hopefully you can see a little bit of sheen on those from the metallic waxes. And for those of you that stayed to the end, thanks so much. I really appreciate that. I appreciate you joining me and supporting my channel. I'm Marilyn. Bye-bye.